Hello, I'm Lauren from Lauren Watkins Art, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to paint the seascape using soft pastels. So grab your pastels and come join me. Here is a look at the uh, pastels I'm using for today's painting. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of blues, I have a lot of browns, and I have the whole uh, grayscale, so pastels ranging from white all the way to black. Um, it's important to have a, the whole values um, in each color. Um, because then you can add dimension and shape to your pastels. You can't mix pastels like you can watercolor, so you have to have a, a few more colors when you're working. Other tools I'll be using include rubbing alcohol, workable fixative, um, ink, I'm using blue and black, palette knives, rubber shapers, and some really old paint brushes. I'm not using nice paint brushes for this because the sanded paper that I'm drawing on will um, wear them down, so don't use anything fancy. So today I'm using UART 400 grit sanded paper and I am drawing a horizon line um, in the top third of my paper. I either do my horizon lines in the top third or the bottom third of my paper. I try to avoid having things dead center because visually our brains do not think it's as beautiful um, to have things divided in the middle. It doesn't like it as much. So I try to keep that in mind as I create a composition. Now I'm taking my pastel pencil and I am starting to just block in the basic shapes of the mountains and the rocks, big general shapes. I'm not being too exact or too picky right now because this is going to be blended out with rubbing alcohol. So this is just to get me a general idea of where everything's going to go. Now I'm taking a dark purple uh, pastel pencil and I'm starting to add it into where the shadows are. I'm looking at my reference photo and getting a general idea of where the shadows will be in my picture. This is going to get blended out as well, so it's not going to be as dark as you see it now. Um, but it's important to start getting your your base colors and your under uh, your underpainting down because that will give something for your other uh, layers to stand out against as you work. Now I added some turquoise to the sky and the water because the sky reflects or not the sky, the water reflects the sky. And so you need to have a, similar colors in both of them. And I'm taking uh, rubbing alcohol, just the generic cheap stuff you can find at the store, and blending out um, all the pastel that I've added. It, this helps to tone the paper without adding too many layers of pastel underneath. Because it's so thin, it's really keeping the tooth of the paper. And so I'll be able to add a lot of layers over the top. The underpainting is getting dried right now using a heat tool. You do, not, you do not have to use a heat tool. This is just my personal preference because I wake up at like four in the morning to paint and I like to spend that time painting instead of waiting for things to dry. I typically only have enough time uh, to paint be before my kids wake up. So I like to utilize that as much as possible. Now you can see me adding some ink in. I'm just using an old paintbrush, just like before, to apply it. This is a mixture of blue and black ink. It looks more black in the video than it was in real life, but this helps to create um, dark anchors or um, guide, uh, guide markers as for me later on as I'm working so that I will know kind of where I am in the picture and where I want the shadows to be. Also, the ink is great because it can sometimes be hard to find pastels that are dark enough, especially in entry level sets. You you get dark black and maybe a dark brown, but the rest of the colors aren't very dark. You don't get a super dark blue or a super dark red. And so doing these ink, doing the ink in the underpainting can help create that dark effect um, without having to do a, using a lot of straight black. Now I dried that off with my heat tool again. Uh, when you're working, it's important to make sure that your paper is always dry. So whether it's the rubbing alcohol or the ink or later on the workable fixative, you want to make sure that's always dry before you start adding pastel over the top. If you don't, it will start creating a muddy mess. So just word of caution, make sure everything's completely dry. Now I am starting to block in the sky. Now this sky is interesting because there's a lot of clouds right above the mountains and they have some really strong shadows. So it creates this effect where the sky is actually darker, closer to the horizon line, whereas normally it's darker up top and fades 
um, to a lighter color the closer we are to the earth. So it's, it's kind of an interesting effect on this picture. I'm taking my palette knife and just starting to roughly blend in those base colors of the sky. I'm going to come back and work on that a lot. Now you can see me starting to add some blues and purples to the mountains. I'm doing that because these mountains I want to appear like they're far away. And to make things look further away, if you make them more blue and more gray and have less detail, they will look that way. Um, if you are out hiking or something and you're looking out far away from you, from the top of the mountain, all the things that are really, really far away from you will appear more blue. And that's because the atmosphere is influencing how everything looks. So just keep that in mind as you're working. Now I'm starting to block in the ocean water. I am keeping this a little bit darker than I normally would because there's going to be a lot of lighter colors on top of that. And the lighter colors will really stand out and really um, show up if there's darker colors next to it or underneath it. If it's, everything's too light, you won't be able to get your lights light enough. Now as you see, I'm working, I kept my, my pastel strokes um, parallel with the horizon line. I did take my palette knife and kind of blended them down, but I didn't go up and down. I just pulled them directly down. And keeping the water smooth and not having too much texture on it will make it appear more like water. If you start going up and down too much, it will start to look more like you've painted a whole field of blue grass, and that's not what we're going for here. Now I'm starting to block in uh, the yellow um, that I want to have as the basic highlight. Um, on the rocks and the beach. And I'm taking a more neutral brown that's a mid-tone. It's not super dark, but it's not light. And I'm starting to block in some where more of the darker colors will be. Some more of the basic shadows, but not my darkest ones. I'm just kind of placing it in, looking at my reference photo, and seeing what um, and seeing what it's showing me on the picture. That doesn't make any sense, sorry. I'm just trying to use that as a guide of what I want uh, to put down. Now I'm adding a more red base brown. And I keep bumping my picture, and we'll get better later on in the video, sorry. Um, now I'm adding some highlights to the sky and really starting to um, build that up, and I'll I'm just looking at that reference photo and seeing what I'm putting in. Uh, I'm going to be saying look at your reference photo a lot in this tutorial and that's because your reference photo is your guide. It's going to tell you how things look exact, um, exactly how they should look and you can deviate from that but it will really give you the most information you need. Our brains kind of like to fill in things and make up stuff, uh, generalizations about how things should look and it's not always the most accurate. Now I've added some more shadows to the to the sky. Again, this is the some of the earlier stages of the painting, and so it's going to be a little rough. I'm going to come back, rework things, blend things certain ways. I'm just starting to get those those. I'm just trying to get the values and the colors down. Now I've pulled in some more dark color into the water. That's a great way to help give more uh, visual distance because the deeper the water is, the more dark it will appear. And so I'm making that left side section of the water darker because I want it to look like it's further away from the beach. Now I took my paper and I kind of knocked it off over the garbage can to knock off any dust on the paper. You don't want to blow pastel because all those particles will get in your face and in your nose and you don't want to be breathing it in. Especially if you're working with artist grade pastels because those can have some toxic chemicals in it and you, you don't want to be taking that in. So I'm just starting to add, I blended out the, the beach a little bit more and I'm starting to add some more layers as I go along. Um, I'm using a really dark blue right now. I'm using my darkest blue. So it's a little bit lighter than the black. I'm just adding those in. Start giving the, the texture and the, the appearance of rock. Now notice that those strokes kind of are a little bit more up and down and they're general shapes and that's going to give the appearance of rock whereas with the water we kept it horizontal and we kept it very smooth. So if you keep your strokes going in the right direction that's going to really help you get the look you're wanting in your picture. You don't want to have to, you don't want to have to 
try to correct things being drawn in the wrong way and covering them up and trying to re-blend it. It's much easier to get your strokes right the first time. Now I'm taking a rubber shaper and blending in the sky. As I work with, when I work with skies, I tend to use my pastel or uh, my palette knife to blend out the pastels, and then I I'll add more layers, and then I'll gradually work to uh, the rubber shaper, and then eventually I won't blend anything up that I add. And the rubber shaper adds some really nice effects. It doesn't overblend, and it it uh, creates a nice softness to the pastels I put down. Now I'm just adding some more detail. I'm strengthening the horizon line and I'm starting to blend out those mountains a little bit. Again, using the rubber shaper. For the clouds, um, I use the rounded rubber shaper and so it comes to a rounded point. And it's really nice for clouds because you don't get any lines. It just creates a really soft effect. Now I'm adding some more value and texture to the beach, going back to the mountains. I like to jump all over the place when I work. A lot of artists work very linear and they will work, they would only work on the sky until it's perfect and then they move to the next, then they would move down to the mountains and then to the water and they just work in one area. I do not think like that. My brain does not work like that. So I like to kind of jump around. That's what works for me. Now I've done some more blending, I added some more colors, and that spray you saw me add was the workable fixative, and it darkened up areas. I had taken a step back and realized that my dark values weren't quite dark enough, and because there was so much that needed to be darkened, I just took my workable fixative and sprayed a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit, and that darkened it up for me. Now you can see I've added the teal um, light turquoise color to the dark section on the left of the water. And you can see that really popping out against the dark. And that's what I mean about having the dark values next to the highlights. It really makes them pop. Now I've been working on the clouds a little bit more. I'm really looking at my reference photo and seeing the direction the clouds are moving. You can, the picture really demonstrated the direction the clouds are moving. And, and so I'm trying to replicate those shapes I see and the strokes I and I do and the strokes I do to replicate to replicate that. Whoa, I have my words have left me today. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now I'm starting to add some more yellow to my beach, and I'm going to be using a lot of unusual colors in my beach scene. Um, so it's really important that I focus on the value, how light or dark something is, more than the color. Now I'm starting to block in the color and the shapes of the waves that I want to show crashing into the to the beach. So I'm adding some shadows and some highlights to it and I'm just looking at my reference photo and seeing what direction they move. I'm adding some shadows underneath that's going to help give the illusion of there being dirt underneath that water, which there is, and um, it's, it's helping that white foam to to stand out. Now I'm just adding some shadows, taking my darker browns, adding them to it. I've added a little bit of magenta, but later on I'll be adding more colors. Some bright orange. I wanted to give the appearance of the sun hitting the rocks and them being like warm. And so I did the uh, the highlights a uh, more yellow color because I wanted them to give that feeling of warmth. Now I'm taking another rubber shaper and I'm just blending this out, but this time I'm using the flat-edged rubber sh shaper, and that is really good for like rocks because you get hard lines, you get a, a little, it's not going to blend quite the same as the rounded one. And so I'm really utilizing that um, as I work with the rocks. Now I'm adding a really pale yellow and I want that to be where the high, the brightest highlights are. Now I'm going in and adding a kind of a mid-tone uh, orange base brown. Kind of rocking and rolling my pastel pencil to give the impression of there being some rocks out in the water a little ways. 
when you're working with pastels, you can you can use the whole pastel. So you can use the side of it to create big long strokes. You can go up on the corner to create fine lines. You just have to manipulate it and get comfortable manipulating your pastels and how, and understanding how they work so you can get the desired effect. Now I've added some purple uh, to the shadow areas and I'm blending that out. I really like um, playing with the color and understanding how they work and so I really liked this purple next to the more orange and yellow base colors because yellow is the complementary color to purple. So mixing them together creates brown but putting them together really helps each other kind of stand out. So I'm adding orange and yellow to the highlights and blues and purples to the shadows to really add that interest and contrast. So you can see we're already starting to get dimension and starting to get the appearance of rock. And I'm gonna fix that, sorry, keep bumping my camera. I'm shaking off my all the extra pastel dust and I'm going to spray this because I took a step back again and realized it was just a little um, too too light so I sprayed the sections I thought needed to be darkened and then I let that dry. I like using the workable fixative but I have to I try to open my window and leave my room for a few minutes while the smell goes away. So I'm going to be looking into past uh, workable fixatives that aren't quite as strong smelling. So I'm adding some more magenta and some more I'm starting to add some highlights to where I want it to look like the water the light is reflecting on the water. starting to add some hard lines. I don't want everything to be too blended out, so I'm at making sure to add some hard lines that aren't super blended, and that will help create definition as well. Now this piece really demonstrates the importance of understanding value, um, because you don't often see purple and pink and green rocks on the beach, but they work because they are the correct value. They are the correct lightness and darkness that you need to create shape. Now I'm adding some more highlights to where I want it to look like there's foam from the water developing. And I'm taking, as the painting progresses, I'm taking more and more time to take a step back and see what I like and dislike what needs to be adjusted. It's really good to just take your time to really understand how you want your painting to go. If you're getting if you find yourself getting frustrated with a painting, you can just take a just walk away from it for a few minutes, go do something else, and then you can come back to it with fresh eyes and you can really better analyze what was bothering you before. Just darkening up that left hand side of the painting. Adding some more blues because I want my, my water to be interesting and to have some texture. So I'm just doing that by creating different strokes of blues in the water. I'm just adding some highlights to the to the rocks and if you see me like add a color and then kind of tap it with my finger you'll see it in a few minutes 